Hey, welcome back you guys. So today I just wanted to teach you some of the basics about drywall screws, what type to use and when, and what are the pitfalls of using the wrong screw in the wrong material. So right here in front of me, I have three screws and only one of these would be applicable for what we're gonna do today, which is quickly fasten some half inch drywall onto this light gauge steel stud. But if we take a look at the screws that I have here, I have a coarse thread drywall screw. Okay. I have a fine thread drywall screw, and then I have a self-tapping drywall screw. So only one of these, again, is intended for fastening the half inch drywall onto this light gauge steel stud, and that would be the one inch drywall screw. You could also use inch and a quarter fine thread screw. That's what I meant to say last time was one inch fine thread. Uh, the reason one inch fine thread works well on half inch is because it still gets to the full depth of the threads. Whereas if I tried to use 5 8 board on this, the 5 8 would start to come up to where the threads start to get smaller and it wouldn't be in the exact right spot. We'll start with the fine thread because that's the one that we are supposed to use here. So I just sunk it about halfway. Now let's just take a look at this. So these fine threads, even though this stuff feels like it's as thin as a pop can, this fine thread screw isn't moving. If I try and wiggle it, it's doing a really good job of actually just staying put. And I can't pull it out easily, I can't twist it easily. Next we have the self-tapping one, which might cause me a bit of grief as I try and sink it, as it usually does better with a half inch of drywall supporting its edge as it's being driven. But this one is actually designed for heavy gauge steel studs. So that's why it has the self-tapping bit, like a drill bit. If you guys can see right up close, it's like a little drill bit there. So that's designed to go through thicker steel. So it drills a pilot hole and it's actually doing, no, it's not solid, right? Because it's not intended to be used on this material. The pilot bit bores too big of a hole into the steel stud. And so now we're left with a sloppy screw. This is going to lead to screw pops. However, if I did this into heavy gauge steel stud, it would be solid. All right, now let's try the coarse thread. So this one's gonna be probably really sloppy. So surprisingly, it's actually less sloppy than the steel stud one, but I still wouldn't trust it, you know? Both, so this one I can twist independently this one I can't twist. And this one, I think if I worked on it a bit, if I just kind of reef on it for a minute, yeah, now I can untwist it. And so there's play, it's sloppy. But I don't, like, if I do that with the fine thread, it's not doing it. This is the accurate screw for this material. But that one's sloppy, that one's sloppy. So we can't use those. Okay, you guys, quick little editor's note, because I don't always explain things perfectly when I film the video, and then when I'm editing, I realize how I could have explained it better. So imagine that these two spaces here are the threads of a coarse thread screw. The steel stud is thinner than the space between the threads, so it can slop around in there. Whereas the spaces on a fine thread screw are much tighter, and it locks the steel stud in perfectly. Anyways, back to the video. So really quickly, let's just drive these into wood, even though this is mostly about steel stud. Um, let's put these into wood and see what they do and see how hard it is to pull them out. So we'll start with the fine thread and we're gonna leave about half an inch of it out. So right about there. That's more than half an inch, but it's okay. Here's the self-tapping one. This is absolutely the wrong kind of screw to use. And then we'll do the coarse thread. So, what was this one? This is the coarse thread. Like, it's doing its job. It doesn't want to come out. Um, <clears throat> you can get these out eventually if you force it enough, but I might break this piece of wood. All right, let's try this one, the self-tapping one. Really easy, because it bores a hole through it and it doesn't have the coarse threads and the finer shank. So, that's part of it is it's got these wider threads and a fine shank. So that way the threads grab the wood really well. 
And now the fine thread, it's not bad, but you can still get it out. But the self-tapping one was definitely the worst in wood. Hey, you guys recognize this sheet of drywall, don't ya? <laughs> so let's fasten some of these so that we can see. They're all gonna work, like they will hold the drywall on, but as we've already seen, only one of them is gonna do the job properly. But we'll try sinking all of them. So let's start with these. Let's start with these self tappers. Yeah. There's a bit of a delay as it goes in, as it rides that steel stud. So what often happens is it kind of blows out the hole of the drywall, which is going to make it even worse. But as we can see, I mean, it holds, right? It's kind of doing its job a little bit. Okay. So now let's go to the coarse thread. And these will, again, do their job. It goes in faster because it has a point. So that one would be a screw pop down the road, but part of the reason that happened is because this is just a janky little L-shaped wall in a garage. It's not a properly braced uh, framed wall that when you push on it, it stays more still. However, anyone who's actually hung board on steel stud drywall knows that, so let's say you have a 10 foot wall and if you try and start your first screws in the middle of the sheet, it pushes the steel stud out and then it's really common to get it spinning out like that. So what I usually try and do is I try and work my way down. And um, if I'm just hanging the sheet at first, I will grab the stud and the board, hold them at the same time and then fasten it so that it can't move and then work my way up from there. That way it doesn't push the stud away and ream out the drywall like that. So you won't be as likely to get screw pops. Um, I wanna get rid of all these and just get the one inch fine thread. I love one inch fine thread screws. Like they're just so quick and fast. Oh, this is gonna be funny. It's gonna be right where the silly patch is. That's awesome. That drill whining up and down sounds like my cat when he needs food. I don't really know what else there is to say about screws, you guys. But basically you can see how you can get away with using whatever screw, but long term, as we saw how it is not solid, it's not a solid connection, you're probably going to get screw pops down the road. It's going to be horrible. Um, so just because you hung a job with the wrong type of screw and it didn't fail doesn't mean that it won't fail down the road. So again, for light gauge steel stud, we want fine thread screws. For heavy gauge steel stud, you're going to need the self-tapping screws. Anyways, hopefully this clarified at least a little bit of it. I want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you got something out of this video and uh, till the next one.